Welcome back to the Tractor Time with Tim Dream Shop Build. The shell is up, and now we get to the more delicate and complicated work. If you're just joining us, we're building a large shop and office addition to our home. Next up is running any lines that need to be ran under the floor. We're going to be focusing on water right over here and two geothermal lines coming across the floor here and hopefully if we get time a propane line now it's just rained outside it's really wet out there i'd like to do that propane line when it's drier because it's going to be awfully muddy uh, to work out there at this point so the geothermal guy is coming tomorrow morning and i'd like to have some of this trenching done before he gets here just so i don't have to bother him have him waiting on me while i need to do some trenching it's late in the evening here. It may be a little dark on the camera. It's hard to tell. It feels really dark in the shop here. Of course, I don't have any electricity out here yet, um, but it's so nice. The weather's beautiful. I'm gonna see if I can get some trenching done. I've got a couple of choices here. I got the mini trencher out. Uh, I've got one inch water line to run in here, and then I'll have inch and a quarter geothermal lines. I think I will run them at separate trenches. I don't really have to be very deep compared to what we are now. I just have to be deep enough here that I don't hit them uh, during the final grading process. Uh, we're about, it looks like 10 inches below. I'll give you a better look here. This is final concrete grade right here. So we've got all the way down to here. I would say roughly 10 inches. If we drop another eight inches or so from there, we should definitely be out of harm's way and we've just got to head out across there. I think I'm gonna make at least two separate trenches, one for the water, one for the geothermal, unless it proves to be too difficult. Okay, so now we have an incoming trench, and then we have two trenches over to the destination. I'm going to let the expert decide how he wants to use these two trenches, whether we keep the geothermal line separate, the in, in going and outgoing to that furnace, putting one of them with the potable water line, or if we put both geothermals in one and the potable water in the other. We'll see how he, he wants to do that. Indiana Geothermal team is here now, and they've told me that a couple of my trenches aren't wide enough. There's just too many lines to put in them. so. I couldn't get my excavator under here. This seemed like a perfect opportunity to use this backhoe. I'll dig out a couple of these trenches a little wider. May add an extra trench, I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. You can see the compacted clay on top. It really did compact nicely. That area that was compacted, see, is just holding together as big clods. It's a little disheartening. I had this stuff compacted so nicely and then I end up having to dig it all up. Some of this right here is, you know, it's been driveway for 30 plus years. It's always fascinating. The same guys that praise me on my skills with the mini excavator are the ones that tell me how bad I am with this tiny backhoe. I'm gonna tell you guys, it's the same operator. There's just several things. The valves are not as smooth on these little backhoes and they just don't have as much strength. So it's hard to do a lot of things. Like right now, I can't make the thing pick up. They're gonna stub the lines outside, so I'm gonna dig a little ways here. At least I'm gonna try. I'm quite nervous digging right next to my new steel building. It really needs to be connected to that trench inside, so it'd be best if I could get under the wall a little bit. I just don't feel comfortable digging here. I'm, I'm gonna tear something up, and I'm not getting under there. I gotta find another way. Let's try my power shovel, the Geo Ripper from Minitrencher.com.
This thing's meant to dig narrow trenches, but I think if I do it right, I can widen it out far enough to be able to handle both of those two inch pipes. Now that, my friends, beats a shovel. Oh my goodness. The guys at Indiana Geothermal have been very helpful here. I don't think I could have understood exactly how all of this connected without their help. Um, by the way, there's a link in the description if you want to uh, contact them. What we've got going on is we've got two inch pipe coming in here. For today, we're just starting here at the building. The only thing we're working on today is inside. The pipes are going to come out just under the front of the building. They're going to have 90s that uh, aim upward, and then they're going to have some pressure test fittings right there. So they'll put all of this underground here, and they will do a pressure test. They're actually going to leave pressure on these pipes until they come back, right? So that way they'll know for sure that uh, the pressure has, is good and that there are no leaks. So two inch lines coming in from the pond eventually. Right now they're just going to the shed. They're all gonna go into these two holes right here. Uh, you, can, you can see there's two holes there. Originally I made those for the venting on the, one of the furnaces. Decided not to put a furnace there, but it's a good thing I have the big holes anyway because we're gonna need a lot of lines going through there. So two inches coming in, and then there's gonna be inch and a quarter lines to each individual geothermal unit. Yeah, that's right, we got three geothermal units. One's gonna be right up here in the mezzanine. Uh, for this end of the whole shop, there's gonna be another one in the wash bay, uh, second floor of the wash bay. I, I say second floor, we're gonna have a shelf that's gonna kind of serve as a second floor there in the wash bay. There'll be a, a, a five-ton geothermal unit there. Yeah, there's two, these are both five-ton units. Indiana Geothermal told me that six tons total would be enough. Um, but after the prior experience I've had with geothermal and how the auxiliary heat has had to kick on more than I'd like, uh, I, I convinced them that we could go with larger systems. Now, some of you are gonna say, oh, if the system's too large, it's, it's, it's not gonna work right. I think some of that history is, is not relevant as much anymore because you have the two-stage systems. And in here we have two systems, so only one of them would, would have to run, and it could run at the lower stage, right? So we don't have to use that full capacity all the time. They don't use regular PVC glue, PVC cement to, to join their fittings. They, they fuse them. They, they heat up. Uh, each end and then they, they basically get them soft then they put them together and it, it fuses together. They refer to it as one continuous line uh, for, the, for the whole thing. This is a better connection and given that the water methanol mixture that goes through these lines varies a lot in temperature. In the summertime it may be upwards of 95 degrees Fahrenheit and in the wintertime it may be 28 or maybe even a little bit lower. And that, over time, they tell me, will force those PVC connections to expand and contract and eventually fail. So fusing is very important here. Randy's got some more detail. Let's take a look at how this fusion process is actually done. So right now we're fusing 90s on to the two inch header pipes that's going to 90 into the crawl space. Um, got an iron that's heated up to about, four, about 490. Um, using the two inch together. So we got already did one over there. We got doing the second one now. And then we're gonna make a, uh, the manifold, which is gonna consist of uh, these T's. And then off of these T's will become the individual runs that go to all the individual units. So after they push it together, you gotta to hold it a little bit so it doesn't push apart. Sure. Kind of like PVC pipe. Okay. When you glue it, if you immediately let go, it wants to come apart. This will do the same thing. So. You gotta sit there and hold it a little bit. I noticed he can hold it with his bare hands though. Yeah, once it's on in about, about 30 seconds, give it a count of 30, then it's pretty stable. Okay. If it's got a lot of tension on it, then you gotta hold it for a little bit longer. But right now these are just easy peasy, no tension. And this is the reducer for the outside for our test, air test caps. 
So that way, once we get all of our fusions done, we can air it up and air test everything. That way, make sure nothing leaks before everything's backfilled. Sounds like a great plan. I hope so. So here you gotta wipe the pipe down and clean it real good, make sure there's no debris or anything on it. And then that's a, a chamfer. So that's also a depth gauge and it also bevels the end of the pipe. And then that's the cold ring and that's what press up against to stop the iron from going any farther. I got this. I can smell the iron. Yep. Easy peasy. Just gotta be careful not to burn yourself. And very customizable mm -hmm. for no barn's going to be the same. No house is going to be the yeah, same. Yeah, everything's all, I mean, it's, it's all the same running pipe to everything, but each individual job is unique. Because it's all heat fused, it also makes it a little harder to make it extremely precise, but it, you can get it pretty close. Okay. It's not quite the same as running PVC where you can dry fit everything. So the guys here are going to put 90s at the bottom of this wall. This is the wash bay wall. We're right here near the corner. And for now, they're going to run the pipe up 12 feet. Uh, 12 feet should be high enough to be well into the second floor wall. Um, then we can deal with it at a later time. So what they're going to do right now is they're just going to connect at the top of that 12 feet, make a U, basically, an upside down U uh, with 290s up there to, to connect the whole system again so that they can do that pressure test. These are inch and a quarter lines just like are going to all three furnaces. And that caused me a little bit of confusion as to how the water flow actually works. Well, the way it works is that each of these geothermal systems has their own pump. My old system has an external pump. So the pump is a total separate piece from the actual furnace. These systems from Climate Master have built-in pumps. So each system has its own pump and they share the main line. I, I find it kind of interesting how that's gonna work. There, there are gonna be check valves so that if one system is not pumping, water is not gonna be able to flow through it, right? So there are check valves in, in the system, uh, but we'll learn a little more about that and look a little closer at that as we go along here. Indiana Geothermal's business is a little unique, at least in my opinion. They're not a traditional heating and air company. Their business is twofold. They install geothermal loops and associated plumbing like this, and they work with heating and air companies to spec the proper systems and overall assist in getting geothermal systems up and running. As an individual, you can contact Indiana Geothermal, and they'll get you hooked up with an appropriate contractor and help you dig the loop. More on that in a minute. Meanwhile, my plumber advised that I put pea gravel around this water line. He's a bit concerned that the crushed concrete might be a little too sharp and might poke through that PEX. I already had a little leftover pea gravel, so why not? If you've been watching us for years on tractors, we've always recommended using rear ballast rather than an attachment. Hopefully you can see why in these scenes. That land plane sticks way out there. Seth is sitting in the crawl space working on all of these junctions that we talked about. What I haven't mentioned is when I first got up this morning, that crawl space was full of water. Our sump pump exhaust pipe had all come apart and just blowing water right back into the crawl space. Rex and I started on it a good while before the guys even got here, and thankfully we had it pumped out before they needed to get in there. It's amazing how quickly that pea gravel drained once we got the excess water out. Now some of this pipe is permanent and some of it is just temporary until we get the actual furnace put in on the inside here. Now just to clarify, most of this complexity is because we have three separate furnaces. With a single furnace, all you need is one outbound line to your outdoor underground loop and one inbound line to return the slightly warmer or cooler water. So you got this pressure test fitting on here and you're just pumping pressure in it. When that gets up to 80 PSI, we'll you're just gonna leave it. We'll shut it off and we'll wait about 10 minutes, see if it settles out any. If it doesn't, then we're good to go and we'll just leave it. Okay. And then it's got looked like just a basketball valve fitting, just stuck right down in there. Why is it going down? 
because I started out high pressure with 100 psi and Oh, okay, the okay. And you've used all the air out of the tank. Right, so it's consuming air out of the tank now. Yep. It'll quit dropping and start rising at some point in time and it'll level off. If we had a big compressor, it would already be done. Yeah. Yep. Watch pot never boils, Christy. It'll take about... 15 to 25, sometimes 30 minutes. Oh, wow. It's not a quick process. Christy, what do you think? We want these two pipes sticking up right here in front of our new building? No. Yeah, I didn't think you'd think so. Well, this is temporary. Um, these are just put up here for the pressure test, right? And we've still got the gauge on here. It reads 80 PSI exactly. It's been on here for maybe 15 minutes after they finish the pump up. Um, they're going to take the gauge off here just any second, pulls out like a out of a basketball and then they'll be back at some day in the future when we actually have the systems and it should still be at 80 psi unless with ham the roller in here or something i uh, let's don't even talk about that no. we've got a lot more on this geothermal system just we'll, we'll try to, to dig a little bit deeper into how it works with each episode going forward and uh, we don't want to throw too much on you at once, and I'm learning myself, so stick around. Bricklayers are here. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort.